Welcome back to the Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler, and with me, as always, is the lovely Janine. Hey, guys. And usually, we record this a couple of days after watching the episode. We usually watch it, take notes, and then watch it again. But we are so flippin' excited. I literally yelled yes and stood up at the TV. I made the dogs go crazy. I <laughs> made the dogs go crazy. <laughs> I literally was on my edge, like, just say it. Come on, say it. Don't tease me anymore. Say it. And not only did he say it, he showed it. All right, but we're not there yet, Tyler. But so we're not we're, there yet. So let's start at the beginning. All right. Starting at the beginning. Starting at the beginning. Hold on. Usually I, re- I figured out who directed the episode already. Because I have times to prep. But I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. And now we will talk while I pull this up is this was the first week of Supergirl where it did not go up against Gotham. And I wonder how fans and comic book nerdists alike reacted. You know, I wonder how her, their ratings will boost because of that. And I do have to say, I think this is one of my favorite episodes thus far. Um, and I will agree with that. There were a lot of things in this episode that just really stood out to me and made Supergirl stand out. And it was really awesome. So let's find out here. Epis- Who directed this, Tyler? Larry Ting. And he is, let's see what else he's directed. Anything with the. Directed a lot for CBS with Hawaii 5 0, Elementary, uh, NCIS Los Angeles. He did direct an episode of Arrow, Sleepy Hollow. But I always like to check to see if they've ventured into superheroes before. Because we've had some directors on here who've done Smallville as well as, um, you know, the current incarnation of what's going on. But the episode is called Human for a Day. And the episode starts where last time uh, Kara was human as she was bleeding. And they just flat out and said it, Jania, just like I thought. Jimmy Olsen said... Solar, Solar flare. flare. He says, that's what the big guy calls him, and that's what he likes to call his powers, because he's a nerd. It's so <laughs> funny. And they talked about how it takes Superman 48 hours to recharge. And it's been longer than that for Kara. Now, my first thought was maybe because she hasn't lived on Earth as long as he has and been exposed to the sun as much. But they said, well, we'll get there when we get there. But basically... That wasn't the case. Now, meanwhile, while Kara has to play human for a day... And is sick. <laughs> is sick. Um, there at the DEO, we're going to clean out the cage of Jim. Now, Jim... It's a character I'm not really familiar with. I had to look him up. But he is called the Son of Saturn. He's from Saturn. And he's a mind control. And I read his race... There was a group of Martians that cloned Martians for servants and workers, and then they kept cloning them and eventually banished them after a revolt, and they became the people of Saturn. Very cool. So that's where he comes from. And the actor that's playing Jim is the actor that played Chaz on Constantine. I liked him a lot. I did too. I'd like to see him come back with Constantine. On Arrow Flash. Definitely. Or the Flaro Tomorrow verse. Or the Flower of. I don't know. I'll figure out something. But, anyways. <laughs> and basically, he's a mind reader, telepath, control your mind. He breaks free because there's a giant earthquake. Right. Now, the earthquake just happens to happen while Supergirl has no powers. Yeah. And of course, she's helpless. And Cat Co. loses power. They can't get online. And who's there to jump in to help everybody? Gwen. Gwen. The IT guy. Yep. Who gets Yay it? for Gwen. Gwen for Gwen. Who gets everything running. But who else is helping out people? 
who has an ideology about why we don't need Supergirl. Maxwell Lord. He just sneaks on in there like a snake. Who sounds like Lex Luthor. And my good friend Phil, you know Phil. Hey Phil. He pointed out, I wonder if this was another test that Max somehow set up for the Earth to happen knowing that Supergirl, because he, he flat out says she doesn't have her powers right now if she gets them back. She used them all up. I studied Superman. Mm-hmm. And if he studied Superman and everything that he's saying, I would almost think he put this test up to show people they don't need Supergirl. Yeah. I could totally see that. And I'm sitting there like, dang, that's harsh. Very. So what happens next is, of course, with the power out, Jim breaks free. Kara is trying to help. And man, that scene where her, Jimmy, and Maxwell Lord run over to help a lady whose father's dying and they can't help him. And Kara is trying so desperately to get her powers back, wishing she could help. And I mean, it's the hero's journey. You have to learn you can't save them all. So heartbreaking, though. Now, can we talk about my favorite scene, though, in the whole episode? Is it not the big one? Well, I guess it's my second favorite scene in the whole episode, then. Then we can talk about it. Okay. My second favorite scene in the whole episode is where she decides, you know what? I don't have my powers, but I can still make a difference. And she goes into that um, convenience store. Oh, my gosh, yes. Convenience store, Yeah. And um, there's the guy with the gun who's just freaking out. And what does she do? She talks him down. She talks him down. And it was so just impactful for me because it, you know, we've watched her do all of these acts of, like, brawn. And, you know, she's doing everything, you know, via her strength and her powers and whatnot. And then here we go in this episode where she's stripped down and she has nothing that she can do other than talk. She has no strength. She has nothing um, to offer other than, you know, just being there for the people. And it was just so impactful for me because, you know, we're watching her shake or watching her. And not to mention her arm is broken. Yeah. She got her arm broken and she's sick because she's experiencing all this stuff with her weekend condition. Mm -hmm. And her arm is shaking because she's holding it out. Um, Because, you know, she can't show, hey, Supergirl's arm's broken. And you just, it's so believable. And I mean, this is like that. I always said, when it comes to heroes, like, it's always like, who's, who's the real superhero? Batman or Superman? Right. And it depends on how you define it. Superhero means, you know, you have powers and abilities above and beyond. It's Superman, you know, not not taking out his moral compass and all that. But, you know, if, if there's a train running down the tracks, Superman doesn't fear jumping in front of her because he knows he's going to be okay. Right. But if Batman jumps in front of her or something like that, he doesn't know if he's going to be okay. Because he's human. So does it make, is he more of the superhero because he's doing things above and beyond knowing that he's limited and can die. Right. And in this case, Kara is stepping out and doing something where she could die. She's got a gun staring her right in the face, and yet she stands up and she says, you know, you can you can be better than this. And that was just, oh my gosh, that was just so great to me because you got to see a completely different side of her heroism. And Jimmy was there with his camera getting some pictures, which, you know, we haven't really seen Jimmy with his camera at all. Because he's been just the head of, you know, the photography and department and everything at CatCo. But we'll jump back. Back in the DEO, uh, it's been locked down, and Alex is still unsure how to trust Henshaw. Right. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, what's going to happen? Jim's out. Henshaw takes a team. The team gets taken down. Henshaw shows back up. Alex is like, what happened? He tells her a story. She's talking to this other agent, and then she decides she's going to go out there. She's going out there because she thinks that, you know, this parallels the story that she that Henshaw had told before. 
you know, where the, the details don't quite add up. Just like her father's disappearance. So she goes out there, and man, what happens is crazy. Henshaw shows up, um, and then she handcuffs Henshaw, and I'm sitting there thinking, she tells, um, what do you call it, Jim, that she'll let him out, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting there thinking, is she going to use Jim to read Henshaw's mind? Mm. Like, that was my thought. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, that would be horrible. It would be. Because they definitely, that would be like one of those, like, crossing a line that just would not work. And I was freaking out. But then she decides with that she's going to take him him down, Jim herself. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So she busts out. Alex is shooting Jim. Jim's taking it. Then Henshaw shows up and just starts beating the crap out of Jim. Hand to hand. And he goes down. And I'm like, okay, something's going on. <laughs> that is when you think something's going no, on. Not I the red knew, eyes or anything like that. Look, I already knew something was up with the red eyes. Okay? <laughs> but I'm just sitting there like, all right, what happened? Yeah, definitely. And then, back to Supergirl. So, I guess a gas leak happens upstairs. And when answers the phone, basically tells people. He's like, help just, was on the way. Yeah, help was on the way. He's like, I just lied to an entire floor of people. So, oh wait, we missed the one part. Before that, Kara is getting a motivational speech from Jimmy. And she's hugging Jimmy as Wynn walks in. Oh, he poor gets a little Wynn. jealous. And he figures out that basically Kara's. Kryptonian cells system needs like a jump start, something like adrenaline to power back up, which I thought was kind of lame, but I liked my idea better, but whatever. And, <laughs> you know, they're going off to save people now. And before that, we missed when got a motivational speech from Kat and she, he called her, what did she call him? She called him two different names. I mean, she called him a hero at one point. Yeah, but she called when. Not his name. What or I don't man, I can't remember. This is what happens when we do it right after we watch it. No time for notes. But he gets it working. Cat gives an awesome motivational speech about the spirit of Supergirl and the spirit of helping each other and being human. And I wonder if that was the real cat. And then afterwards she's acting as if she was acting when she said it, but that was really her. Yep. Yeah. So, interesting, interesting. So back to where we were. They're going up to the floor above them. Wynn and Jimmy, because Kara's arm's still broken. She's trying to help. And they get the people, but then Jimmy falls down the elevator shaft. And wouldn't you know it, that's just what Kara needed to jumpstart her system. Of course. But I will have to admit, I did kind of laugh because... This is the first time in the series they've done this. Where did her suit come from? Yeah. Like, I was like, now, I'm not a woman, okay? <laughs> I don't wear skirts. Mm-hmm. Thank God. <laughs> but I could foresee having a skirt underneath pants at work, especially the kind of wardrobe that she wears with a cape. Be a little different. Not practical. And it's a suit. It's not Kryptonian armor like in the comics. I mean, at least Flash, we see him run and grab his suit. Arrow has to suit up. Yeah. Jim wears a tie. I mean, but but she is Supergirl, and... where? Yeah, but she jumped down it in her regular clothes. You know, I'm just kind of like, she could have saved him in her regular clothes, then got her suit. Yeah. You know? I agree. So that, huh? Come on. We're past that. Magical suit out of nowhere thing. This ain't like in the movie where she jumps behind a bush and gets dark hair and a schoolgirl outfit. <laughs> yeah. But then, boom. Supergirl's off to save the day. Helping people. Stopping the the bus of children going off a cliff. Classic. 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 And then, meanwhile, Supergirl's helping people. 
Alex has a scene, but we'll get back to that. The episode ends where Supergirl is talking to Cat about she looks up to Cat, and then she flies off to get hit by something and fall down, and boom, there's her aunt with her little Kryptonian thugs, and it goes off. And I was like, cool, because Phil sent her tweeting me like, whatever happened to her aunt? <laughs> <laughs> She's there somewhere, and then she comes back. Cool, though. Cool. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Hinshaw's sitting there. Out Goosebumps is talking about this. And Alex walks in and starts talking to him. And he just says, I'm not that Hank Hinshaw. And he tells her that Hank Hinshaw was pursuing an alien that was more of a refugee here. It was a peaceful alien. And that Hinshaw captured it, and that Jeremiah Danvers gave his life to save that alien, and that alien promised that he would look after his family. And, huh. She's like, well then who are you? And he says, I'm from my own, my planet, the last survivor of Mars. And his eyes light up, and he's like, his skin changes, and he's like, my real name is... John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Holy cow, am I excited. I jumped up. I was like, yes. The <laughs> dogs went crazy. I got goosebumps just thinking about it. I love this. I know it's been predicted, but I love that that Henshaw, because that opens up that maybe the real Henshaw survived this. I say somehow, like, I, I kind of picture him burning up like Anakin Skywalker, and then they put cybernetics on him, you know? Mm-hmm. Some sort of cyborg thing that's going to come back. So he does come back as Cyber Superman. Yeah. Yeah. But man, that he's Martian Manhunter, and the fact that he made Alex swear not to tell Kara was awesome. Mm-hmm. But just he looks great, great as Martian Manhunter, and that just opens up this just the story. It opens up potential. Just so much can happen. I really like his look. We got a picture right here. Yeah, I really really like his look. It's very reminiscent um, to me. Of uh, the animated series that I love so much, Young Justice, you know. Yes. And I just, I absolutely love that. I mean, I've seen other Martian Manhunters, and I mean, they don't look bad. All right, well, here we go. The first live action Martian Manhunter happened in the Justice League TV series that was around 96, 97, (laughs) that never got picked up for a pilot. (laughs) Played by David Ogden Sears. Better known as Winchester on MASH and the voice of Cogsworth and Radcliffe in Disney. Yep. Nothing like having a belly there, John. But the makeup is actually quite quite good. Yeah. The, okay. the next live incarnation we get, which he got one quick shot in like Green Martian, was Phil Morris on Smallville. Yeah. And I liked him on Smallville. He's all right. I like how the signature red X was his gun belts and his design. You know, we saw the red the red eyes. I'm not sure how I feel about the guns, to be honest. But well, he's a cop, like yeah. Oh well, yeah. Straight up, he was a detective in this. But man, that where he shape shifts and reveals himself right there is amazing. I I love the suit. I really really enjoy that suit a lot. Because it's Martian Manhunter, but it's not, like, corny Martian Manhunter. Yeah. They could have taken it to a complete, di- complete like, corn level, but they did not at all. And his, um, I mean, that's computer generation, right? Majority of it, or is it what, a partial? Suit? No, the face. Makeup? I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a. A combination of yeah. two? It's so quick and hard to tell. Yeah. But I love his face. I love what they do with his head and everything. I think it looks... It looks so much better than anything before. Mm-hmm. I am... I'm so excited that they did that just because it opens up Supergirl's world. Like, we already got Red Tornado, which is probably gone for now. Yeah. And now we got Martian Manhunter, and that's great because she's going to need an ally. And with her aunt and just these Fort Ross, like, having... Him that explains so much more of just like last you know the the time 
uh, Phil and I were talking about how he dismantled that bomb. And he said it was a dud, but it was really a live act of bomb without the bomb squad. We now know he's Martian Manhunter. Yep. It's so cool. I'm excited. It explains a lot of What's stuff. crazy is this episode felt like the way it ended, like this would be your mid-season finale. Mm-hmm. The reveal of Martian Manhunter. Car getting taken down by her aunt. I don't know. But what are you, what are your thoughts, faithful listeners? Any final thoughts, Ju? Um, like I said, one of my favorite episodes, uh, by far, honestly. Um, this is an episode that's going to catapult us into, you know, better episodes to come and a better, thicker storyline, um, and something that we can all follow and enjoy together. So, I just, I can't wait for it. I agree. It's getting late. Makes me excited for a lot of future episodes. Yes. And I, I'm glad this is the episode that went with Gotham with around to get more people to watch Supergirl. Keep watching, guys. Alright, see you next time.